Hey there internets, I'm Michael and this is Two Can Play That Game and today we are finishing our look at <sighs> Yeah, yes, yeah, so, sorry, it's a bit of a hefty one this so yeah, finishing our look at Terra Mystica and of course that means today will be my review of the game where you can find out my thoughts and opinions on the game and of course whether or not two can play this game. But if you're interested in learning how to play the game or seeing an example of the game played, please do check out my previous videos. Let's start with what is Terra Mystica? Well, Terra Mystica is a Euro where you are trying to end up with the most victory points. Okay, so that's pretty much a done thing. But this isn't as dry as some other Euros. In this, you are a race and you are trying to expand your territory. To do that, you need to make the neighbouring areas suitable habitats for you to build in. So you terraform them. But of course, you're not alone in doing this. No, there are other races that are also trying to terraform the areas around them. So as well as doing your terraforming, you'll then of course be building buildings using resources. So there's an aspect of resource management in this because the more buildings you build, the more resources you gain. But when you upgrade those buildings, you lose the resource that you would have been gaining from them for the future rounds until you build the basic building again, which is kind of an interesting mechanic. So as I say, the nature of this game is that you are building towns, trying to spread your influence across the world. Now, that's very brief and I will talk more about mechanics and how they all work together later on in the review. But if you want to know more about the details of how all the gameplay works, etc., do check out the previous videos. Now, the first thing I want to talk about with Terra Mystica would normally be the artwork. But actually, the first thing I want to talk about is the weight of this box. Now, the second you pick this up, you know you are getting value for your money. I mean, you can probably hear the table creak when I put this down. See? How many games do that? I mean, this is a big box and it's not a big empty space. Let me take the lid off here and you can see this is crammed full. You are getting so much in this box, so much value for your buck. Let's say that. So yeah, with that out the way, talking about just the sheer weight of this and how you could use it as a brick if you needed to, now let's talk about the artwork and uh, we've got the cover here and it is very pleasing to the eye it doesn't do a lot to explain what the game's about other than you have got some digging and you have got the different lands in this circle but it's quite nice pleasing artwork it has that kind of semi-cartooniness that I like and it's got these bright vibrant colors involved so that really does appeal to me and then on the side of the box you've got each of the races that also that kind of appeals to me because I'm a bit of a fantasy fan and these are kind of fantasy races that you're seeing here with like giants and dwarves and stuff. So that immediately just looking at the box makes this game appeal to me. But what about the artwork in the rest of the game? Well, there isn't really a lot of it to speak of. I mean, even the rule book, it's pretty much just a lot of text with some good graphics of the game components etc but there's no real artwork artwork there to speak of and that kind of follows through in a lot of the rest of the components i mean take the player boards here okay you've got the picture of the race the same as you see on the side of the box and they're nice pictures i like those but otherwise there's not really much in the way of artwork. There's a lot of graphic design, don't get me wrong, and it works really well. And I'm gonna talk more about how the graphic design on these player boards really does help and improve the gameplay. And then we've got the cult track. And I kind of like the images on this, yeah, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, but 
you know, it works. It's just a colored track really, and doesn't add a lot artwork wise. And then that brings us to the board. Now, obviously the board has a fair amount of artwork with regards to the different locations and uh, they do a good job of color coding them, but they're not really particularly interesting. But as a whole, the image of this board, there's lots of nice colorfulness going on and that is attractive and interesting. And of course, the back of the board has each of the races, nice and large pictures, which as I say, I really like the pictures for the races. So yeah, not a lot to talk about on the artwork, but the artwork that there is, is pretty nice. Now let's talk about the components and the components in this game are fantastic quality. This game has one of the highest production values I've seen in a, in a non-miniatures game anyway. I mean, firstly, let's talk about the board here. Now, okay, there's one shame. It's single-sided, but the quality of this board is nice. And I, okay, it's rare for any company to go wrong with a playing board. But the board we have here is nice quality. Then we have this cult track board and the player boards. Again, in some games, they would have just gone for flimsy cardboard that's really thin, but you can see this is good heavyweight cardboard that feels nice and it means it's not bending and shifting in the box. And I, I think it's really high quality. Now we get on to some of the more interesting components. So all these wooden ones. So we've got here the first player marker that's nice quality. And for the most part, the paint jobs and stuff are really good on these pieces. Now, I will say I had a couple of issues with a few pieces being stuck together, etc. Um, but that's definitely the minority and the company are really good at sending out replacements. So for the most part, though, you're unlikely to have any issues. But the quality of wood here is really nice. OK, it, it's not heavy weight or anything, but it's nice, good wooden components. And when you put all of those wooden components together, that is why this game weighs so much. And these are nice. They work functionally. They look good. And they're nice, bright, vibrantly painted pieces. But not all the wooden pieces are painted. For example, we have our worker cubes. Now these are just plain wooden cubes, but they're really nice crisp cut cubes. Okay, it does mean if you stand on one of these, it's really gonna hurt because they've got spiky edges, but uh, they're nice quality, well done pieces that really just make the game have a nice tactile experience to it. Then of course we've got tokens for money and the various other things. And these are all good cardboard stock for the tokens. They seem to be lasting really well, the actual printing on the cardboard as well. So component wise, I can't find any faults really with this other than the fact that the board is not double sided. So let's talk about the mechanics of this game. Now, there are quite a few games that have similar kind of theme to them and mechanics with the whole you gain resources you build buildings but they don't do it quite the same as Terra Mystica and a big part of that is the terror part of this it's that terraforming of spaces and the way it's not just having the economy of your resources for regards to building buildings to gain more resources. It's that economy of you terraforming spaces. So different spaces are easier to terraform than others for different races. And that works really nicely and you can part terraform, but then other people can do it back. And it's just a really interesting mechanic with the way it works mechanically with the tokens and putting those on the spaces to physically change the color of that space works really nicely. Another way this differs from other city building games is the way it works with regards to the economy of your buildings and the fact that when you put a building out, you literally uncover what you're gonna gain in income. 
and from a graphic design point of view it works really nicely there's spaces laid out for everything so you can see where they go and when you take it off you then see oh that's what I'll be gaining and when you upgrade a building you cover it up again so you know you're losing that resource in future and that whole thing of where well, you can upgrade but then that means you're going to have less workers etc it kind of makes you wonder, well, is it worth me upgrading or am I better off? Do I want the more workers? And it creates this lovely economy of trying to upgrade, but not too fast, because if you upgrade too fast, you'll then have no workers and cripple yourself. And as I say, this player board here is so well designed to help you in understanding how that upgrade will work with what you'll gain and what you'll lose. And even to the point where it tells you with these arrows what you can upgrade to. That works fantastically and it is different than any other game I've seen like this, where you have this, you're building and upgrading your buildings, that by doing so you're losing something to gain a different thing. And I think it works really lovely to create this game that is such a cerebral, mind-bending game. And there's no luck in this. So it, everything you do, you know, is going to matter. So I'm talking about the player board here and the, how doing the properties makes this game really interesting. Another thing that makes this game different as I already said about the digging and how you can improve your digging track, very Euro-ish way of looking at it. And also you do the same with your sailing. But the one thing that is very different is these power bowls. Now, that does make it different. I will, I will give you that. It's basically just a bit like having another resource or currency there that you can only use for certain things or has a certain cost to it but it has this kind of delay reaction because of you having to move the stuff around in the bowls. And I'm not sure it really adds much to the game. I mean, it would work fine just having two bowls where you expend to one and then it comes back kind of in my mind, but it is different and it is an interesting mechanic, but I'm not sure it's necessarily a great mechanic that alters the game much and it definitely is a mechanic that people tend to struggle to get their minds around and understand because it is different to other games out there but once you get used to it it does work and it does make for an interesting game but could it be the same interesting game without that I don't know and I think maybe it would be just as good with everything else going on and the powers being simplified there so, as you can probably tell, I really love Terra Mystica. I think that the way all these different mechanics work together with where you've got so many different areas you can try and work towards to build up points. You can try and have the biggest um, number of structures. You can try and have the most in the cult tracks. You can try and do a bit of everything. You can try and just focus throughout the game on those scoring tiles that are different every round and give you a different thing to, to try and achieve for. Or you can kind of ignore some of them and go, right, well, I'm working myself up to get a big score on this one particular scoring tile. And those different options make for it to be a really fun interesting game and everyone you play against will have a different take on what kind of strategy they want to try and one thing that's really good about this is you're not going to learn this is the strategy to win this game because every race you play will differ what kind of strategy you play the different scoring tiles that you are going to have available at the various rounds will change every single game that keeps this game fresh and interesting and gives it great replay value. So obviously I really like it and I think all those mechanics work well and if you like a reasonably heavy but not dry Euro, you will really enjoy this. And of course there is a reason that this is so high in the Board Game Geek top games list. And I think it was at number two for absolutely ages. It's now at number three. And I imagine this will stay in the top five for at least five more years. It is that good a game because it's Euro that 
people who tend not to like euros, especially those dry heavy euros, will enjoy. But people who like those dry heavy euros will also enjoy this. So it has a great pull of people there. But you're not going to get non-gamers playing this. This is in no way an, an intro game. You're not going to get people who don't do a lot of gaming. You're not going to be able to use this as a gateway game. And it is a complex game with a steep learning curve. So if you're considering trying it out, please do bear those things in mind. This is two can play that game. So can two play Terra Mystica? Yes, this is a great game for two player. And I really enjoy playing this two player. I would say the sweet spot on this game is three players though, because it just adds that a little more going on on the board to spice the game up a bit. Now, if you go to four or five players, it gets a bit too long of a game. And it's not that the downtime is that bad because each person's only doing one action and you're kind of paying attention because you want to know if it will give you power and how it will affect your turns. But it does drag on a bit too much and give you a bit of a downtimey feel when you play with five especially, but also with four. And with free, you don't really get a feel of having that downtime. The game time still fits into about probably two hours. If you're playing with new people, probably nearer three hours. But that's pretty good for a heavy Euro. And if you're playing with two people, you could, if you're experienced players, play a game of this in an hour. More likely is an hour and a half. But still, that is really good. Now, why is it though that I say three is a sweet spot and two is just really fun and good? And the reason is this board. There's one side to this board that you use no matter how many players you have. And that doesn't change at all. When you're playing with five people, you're using this board. When you're playing with two people, you're using this board with no changes or variation to it. So it can be a bit open and inactive when you're just playing with two people. Now, the mechanics do help a bit with this, and that's why it still is a really good game, despite them not having thought to do a kind of modular board that either has sections that are closed off for fewer players, or even have you know a different board on the other side, which would be so simple to improve the scaling of this game. But as I say, for two people, what kind of helps pull it back despite this board is the whole mechanics whereby it is beneficial to be near your opponent. And that means that even though you've got all this space, you'll still find yourselves next to each other and confined into a smaller part of the board because you want to be nearer your opponents in order for your trade houses to be cheaper, which is really nice, but you also want to be near your opponents so that when they are doing things, you can gain power. And so that's a nice thing they've done mechanically to mean that no matter what the board is or what amount of board you're playing with, it still does pull you together. But you get very much a feel when you're playing two player that there is a lot of open space there, a lot of space you could move into. Now, this board works best with five people for conflict, over space, etc. It works best with five people. And I think it would have been nice for there to be a way to have that same feel of conflict with the fewer player numbers. But overall, the two can play that game give two thumbs up to Terra Mystica. If you are a fan of very thinky games, even potentially a bit thematic, this, this isn't hugely thematic, but it definitely is not a dry Euro. If you're interested in trying that kind of heavyweight Euro, but want something that doesn't just feel so dry, this is definitely the game to try. If you don't want a heavyweight game, stay clear. But uh, that is my thoughts on Terra Mystica. I do hope you have enjoyed this review and if you have please do check out the other videos on the channel and of course subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends and family. 
Also, you can find us on social media. We are on Facebook and also on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.